we'll now do the dog, we'll paint the dog. Very simple, two colours, a little bit of the cobalt and again the burnt sienna. Now the two colours together will give us quite a dark colour. Now, I'm going to start off with the ears, point of the brush, little triangles for the ears. Add a little bit of burnt sienna, that will change the colour slightly. Into the blue. Straight across the back. Press the whole brush down, flatten it, the whole, you get the whole shape then. So try not to outline, I, I rarely outline a shape. So try not to outline and then colour it in. I always try to, to block in a shape rather than do an outline. Introduce a little of the burnt sienna so you'll see that the shape is kind of created as the colours mix. Let the colours mix on the paper. A little bit of the burnt sienna and the blue will create the shape of the dog. So there's the back leg. So there's the general shape into the blue again. So you're just using the two colours but you're just letting them alter on the paper. A little bit of blue, so blue here. And of course this colour will, will merge in. Now we want to introduce a little bit more of the burnt sienna. So it's a little bit more brown on the foot. And then there's a paw here, just kind of tucked behind. So we just want that just to show, because we don't want it to look like a three-legged dog. So it's got four legs. You can just see the other one. Then I'm using what I call a dancing brush. I just let the brush kind of push it from side to side and that will give me the reflections on the beach. There we are, we've got the dog. So we'll do the second figure now, the little girl. So again, same colours, burnt sienna, a permanent rose. We'll just touch in the face. A little bit of the arm. Brighten the colours up. Now the hair, I'm going to put a little bit of raw sienna and just scoop a little of the blue from the palette. So I use what's called a working palette. I can see all my colours mixing as I go. So if I decide, well that's not dark enough, I can just scoop the brush into a darker area. So I'm not using anything different, I'm just letting the mix change for me on the palette. So a little bit of pink. I'm going to, I think I'm going to give her a pink dress, but because she's against the light, I have to tone it down. I, if I made that bright pink, it would look really odd. So I'm just going to put a little of the blue in, and that will give me a darker pink. It will still appear pink by the time we've finished. It's her little pink dress. Keep the colours nice and wet. Now again, just let it go next to the arm. And don't feel rushed in any way. There's the other side of her dress just kind of sticking out there. And then we want to introduce a little more of the burnt sienna to the flesh tones. Now I like to put my paint on a kitchen tile because I can see what's happening, I can see the mix. There's her hand that's just going behind her face. And then we'll paint the legs in at the same time. Now as soon as I've painted this, I'm going to let the colour of the dress run down into this leg. So I first of all get the shape. So she's leaning on that leg. I'll wait just and that'll suddenly go, but I'll just wait. I want the leg behind a little bit darker against the light. Keep the shape nice, use the shape of the brush and just push the brush for a wider stroke and lift it for a narrower stroke. So I like to use a traditional round brush. Now I'm ready then to let that colour just fall through. And that then links the whole figure. And then at the same time, don't forget the little reflections. So a little bit on the beach. So it's as if the water, the sand is wet, the water's come up the beach and then it's run back down again. So you've got a nice wet beach area. Now finally, the third figure. So again, the same, we've only used three colours. Let's 
the head. Let that settle a moment. Always just let the paint sit into the paper. Just don't rush it, but don't panic about the watercolour running too much. If you want more colour, just tap it with the brush. A little bit more. So I tend to do the, the arms first and then I link the head with the shirt, the hair with the head. Think of it all as puzzle pieces and I try not to let any of these dry. Right, so now we'll put the hair. Now I'd like some nice dark hair on her, nice dark shape. So just dip the brush, whatever paint is still in it, you just push it through the blue. Start with the top of the hair. Just let it touch the face. Don't worry about eyes and features. and Don't worry about that at all. The side of her hair there. Then we'll give her a nice shirt. We want a lighter coloured shirt. I'm going to use the raw sienna. Put it onto what, the dirty part of the palette, really. The, the part of the palette that's had blue in it. So although it's yellow, it's kind of a little bit of a grubby colour because, again, it's against the light. Don't make it bright. It will look really odd. Give it somewhere to go there. Just push it into the corner, but don't let it all run just yet. You've got plenty of time. Leave a little gap so that the light shines through where there's a space between her hair and her, the side of her face. So into the yellow again. Right, the trousers, blue. So we'll go again for the, the cobalt. So we've kept a really simple palette. The key with this is to keep it simple, don't overcomplicate it, and just enjoy the painting. Right, a little bit stronger. Now a natural hair brush holds a lot of liquid, which is a good thing because it's a reservoir. Right, this is going to be the little stick that she's holding. When I paint a picture with figures in it, I always like there to be sort of something happening on the picture. Something, not, it's not just a picture of figures. And obviously with this, the picture is all about meeting the dog on the beach. And the boy's obviously trying to attract the dog and if I was that dog, I'd be a bit wary of this girl with a big stick. So there's a little bit of tension happening. And I quite like that with a painting, that there's a story behind the painting rather than just a picture. So I'm making this a little bit darker at the bottom. Also, when you've drawn a line drawing, don't panic too much if you go outside of the lines. Your line drawing is really there as a guide. It's not there to be stuck to rigidly, so don't worry. Now that's a flat base because, of course, that's, uh, that shoe is on the side. This one is facing us, so that's a little bit different. So then we, again, we've got the reflection underneath. And just tap the brush onto the page. And as you just tap it, it will release the paint. Now the stick, it's a very narrow shape, so I'm going to use a rigger brush for that. So all I'm going to do is roll the brush across the palette and that will create my nice dark colour. So I've just used all the colours that were already there. The stick comes from about here, down to here. And if by any chance that colour runs in, that is fine. That's great. Okay, lovely. So we're now going to block in the beach area at the front of the painting. Now this is quite dark. It's surprisingly dark. Often when we paint a beach, people will use yellow. I use burnt sienna, permanent rose. So it's quite a dark colour. A little bit of the blue goes in. I'm just going to block in the whole section. So flatter the brush all the way across. Don't worry if you miss bits. This is good. This is going to give us the edge where the damp sand touches the water. In other words, this is all wet, this area. It's glistening. This area is, is wet sand, so there's no water on the top of it. So that way, we've blocked in our beach area. I need to let that now dry. 
Now we're going to use the flat brush as a stippling brush. We're going to create the texture on the beach. So on my palette, I'm just going to test out the colours. So that's the shape that I want. I want my brush to be opened out, so when I stipple, it gives me a texture. Perfect. Let it go on to the beach area, so there's a few little, little bits that go over the top. This is going to create the foreground interest, and it's important that the foreground is different, is textured, but you don't want to spend too much time on it because the interest is actually the figures. So it's important not to go too mad here. But you do want a little bit in the foreground. Okay, now at that point, using the same colours and the round brush, I'm just going to imply there's a few little pebbly bits on the beach. So bigger, bigger blobs really, little, little rocks and things that have gone onto the beach. Okay, and then we need a darker section, we're using the flat brush, very much in the same colours as we used before. So the blue, I want to anchor these people onto the wet sand a little bit more. So flat brush, look at where they're sitting on the, or standing on the beach, look at where they're standing and just put a few more strokes in between. Now, I really love it with watercolour when this sort of thing happens, when you let the colour run. So don't be worried when watercolour does that. Just put a few strokes in the foreground. I need to let that dry. So the finishing touches on any painting are really important. Now, I'd like to put a little bit of dark in here. I'll get my stippling brush into the blue again. A little bit more water, not too much, you don't want to make this too wet, but I do want to just make it a little bit darker in the foreground to balance this area. And it's really important to allow yourself a little bit of time to do that. It's also the fun bit. Then I want to just bring down a little more of the reflection because had I put the beach higher up I wouldn't have needed to but because it's a little bit lower down I want to put a little bit in here so I'm going to go back to the colours I had not too much but you just want to put a little bit more reflection on the beach here so flatten the brush and a little bit here now there was a yellow there that was rather nice so we'll bring in a little touch of that yellow just a little bit, and a little bit of blue here. So the idea is that you're going to look at the picture and decide what you need to do to finish it. And usually it's not very much at all. So if we look at this area, this section in the background, we could probably just put a few more strokes here just to make the water a little bit darker. A little bit there. With all watercolour paintings you've got to remember not to fiddle. So I think that's about it. The important thing is we've kept the figures nice and fresh, the foreground is lovely and textured and dark and the nice bit is letting the paint run for you. Let it, let it go. So most importantly have fun with your watercolour and enjoy painting figures. Now available to buy. Try these techniques at home whenever you wish. The extended version of today's workshop and the book that accompanies this series are now available to order from the Painting and Drawing Channel. 
For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.